blood of Jesus. Amen. Because his blood is the one that washed away all our sins. I just got to
church say amen. amen. How many of you know that your blessing is coming through? Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you just give the Lord a wave off of right where you are? All over the church. If you know that your blessing is coming through, why don't you raise your hands and say, yeah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. There is a word from the Lord. And I would not quench the spirit with a long, lengthy introduction. Because I believe that you know the tree by the fruit it bears. And today, my brothers and sisters, we have with us a child of God. In the person of the presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. John H. Gillison. Yes. Amen. Amen. The presiding elder of the Edisto District in the South Carolina Annual Conference of the AME Church. Amen. Amen. And that is my home district. Amen. Amen. So they made me who I is right now. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, the presiding elder John Gillison is more than a presiding elder. He is a nurturer. He is a father. He believes in taking time with those in whom God has placed under his charge. And I remember my brothers and sisters years and years and years and years and years and years and years ago. He decided that he was going to sit me down. And he told me a thing or two about myself. He did. He said, meet me. And uh, we went in the town and country, hotel, in the lobby, and he told me all. Amen. 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 And I remember that day as if it were yesterday. Amen. Because when he told me about myself, that brought me down a few notches. Amen. Amen. Every now and then you meet somebody who cares about you enough that they would be willing to tell you about yourself. Good. He is a man who is filled up with the love of God. Amen. Sometimes it may hurt you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because he's not going to sugarcoat it, but so much. Amen. But when he gives it to you, it will be the right thing for you to do. Amen. I praise God for Dr. Gillison and for his wife and his entire family, his children, his grandchildren and for the resolve that God has given him to always reach back and build somebody else up. Amen. Had it not been for John Harold Gill Gillison, I don't know where I would be today. Amen. And that is the truth. When my father died on May 18th of last year, although the presiding elder and I have had a very good relationship, and from my moves from Charleston to Columbia, Columbia to Durham, Durham to Georgetown, he has always kept up with me. Amen. And from time to time, when I didn't keep up with him, he kept up with me. Amen. 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 I got a call early this week that said, where are you? I was looking for you. And I said, oh, presiding elder. Amen. Amen. But when I forget to call him, he remembers to call me so that the connection can always be there. Yes. And when my father died on May 18 of last year, I did not cry but so much. Amen. Because as he was leaving this side, the Lord was raising up another one on this Amen. side, Amen. who would then fill in the gap and become the earthly father. Amen. And since my father has gone, I have, I have not missed a beat. Amen. Because the Dr. Gillison has stepped in and has become just like a father. Amen. 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 To me, praise the Lord. And he did not have to do it, but the Lord placed it in him. And for that, I am eternally grateful. And for that reason and those reasons, I have invited him to be with us today, my brothers and sisters, on this, our family and friends, homecoming day celebration. Who better to have with you to preach the word of God than your daddy? Amen. Amen. 
So we have with us a preacher by excellence. And after the singing of, and after, you know, I tried to figure out how we could get you up in the best way. Amen. And I had to reach forward to Young Island, South Carolina, because I knew that Mount Paul would come and set it up just the way you needed to be set up. Amen. 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 So after the singing of the Mount Paul AME Church Choir, and I tell you, my brothers and sisters, they can say But I call him my father in the Lord, Amen. Dr. John H. Gillison. Hear ye him. Amen. Amen.
Billingson, when he comes to Mount Hall, he runs all around our church. <laughs> and I know he didn't bring us all to have had the same one song. <laughs>
proclaim your holy word, your sacred word. May the words and expressions of my feeble mouth and the meditation of every heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. To the very fine and erudite pastor, energetic pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kylon Jerome Middleton. As the late Bishop Higgins used to say, uh, those who had their earned doctorate degree said, now he is the real doctor. So Dr. Kylon is the real doctor. To the Reverend Clemente Pinkney, also Senator, South Carolina. And to the uh, ministers who assist here, Reverend Palmer and Reverend Vereen, and Reverend Rutledge, glad to see you. Uh, glad to see the president is in the house. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about President Bush either. <laughs> this is a better president than Bush. <laughs> president Deeds is here. Uh, the organization of South Carolina. Yes. We're so glad to see him. Glad to see the spouses of these ministers who are here. And uh, happy to see this wonderful group that came all the way from the Edisto District. Young Dallas. Long Hall. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Reverend Pinkney, for bringing them. And uh, thank you, Augustus, and thank this choir back here. All of you These folks seem like they got good religion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just delighted to be here today. I'm honored to be here. My first time in this great city. My first time in this great city. <laughs> but I hope it won't be my last time. I just want to take a moment to say, to thank God for your, your pastor, yes. Reverend uh, Middleton. Uh, I, he, he, he was telling a whole lot of you today, uh, but I want you to know that uh, he, he told the truth. <laughs> and he told the truth, he and I met. The Lord told me to do that. Yes. And when the Lord tells you to do something, you can't fight the Lord. I said, yes. And he and I had a wonderful dialogue. And it's all because someone did it for me. Amen. Someone did that for me. And therefore, uh, I wanted to do it for someone else. Yes. I used to tell these young folk, you know, I said, now, whatever I can do to help you to, to succeed, uh, if you're pushable, I'll push it. But if you're not pushable, I ain't gonna waste my time. Amen. <laughs> Reverend Kylon Milton is pushable. He is a wonderful, he's a smart, has great potential. And, uh, and therefore, uh, God bless you, sir. And I'm sure the members of this church <clears throat> will attest to the fact that he has great ability. And under his leadership, you will continue to grow and glow. I've heard and I've seen what your plans are. And I heard the lady who gave the uh, welcome, he said, you're here this year, but if you come next year, we'll be over there. Amen. Under the leadership of this great pastor. Amen. And so God bless you, sir. And keep on keeping on in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> I want you to pray for me. I'm going to ask all of these fine choirs and all of you out there, I want you to pray for this minister as he attempts to deliver the word. Amen. I need your prayer. Now the only thing I'm going to say to these preachers, is you just keep the golden rule. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. <laughs> so when you get up here, you're going to want somebody to pray for you. Now, I'm supposed to preach, and uh, of course you're going to do some listening and praying, of course, as I ask you to do. So 
for you have your task and I have mine. Mine is to preach. So you are to listen and pray. Now, if you get through your task before I get through mine, just raise your hand. <laughs> but I hope I don't feel here that you have to raise your hand. I invite your attention to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. <clears throat> they shall run <clears throat> and not faint. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And I want to use as a subject today, fly high. Fly high. I want you to re repeat after me, please. All family members, all family members, fly high, fly high. All of our friends, all of our friends, fly high, fly high, fly high, fly high. Amen. 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 Symbolically speaking, every Christian is given a pair of wings to fly. Amen. God intends for us to stretch out our wings and fly like an eagle. Yeah. The story is told of an eagle's nest that sat at the top of a high mountain. A strong wind came and blew an egg out of the eagle's nest, and it rolled down with the mountain into a valley and ended up in a chicken farm. When the mother hen saw the little egg, she was puzzled, for she had not seen anything like it before. She thought to herself, what a funny looking chicken egg. But I will sit on it until it hatches, and I will accept it as my little chicken. When the egg was hatched, the mother hen said, what a funny looking chicken this is. But I will accept it as one of my own. It had big beak and big feet, and huge wings. The other chickens of the farm laughed at the strange bird because it looked so different. Yes. Yes. And even though the bird was born with an eagle's, with eagle genes and eagle chromosomes, it was born in chicken surroundings. Yes. So therefore it walked like a chicken. Yes. It acted like a chicken. Yes. It thought like a chicken, yeah. and it dreamed like a chicken. Yeah. The biggest dream this little bird had was to one day get on the top of a barnyard fence yeah. and just crow like a rooster, mm -hmm. hoping that this accomplishment yeah. would bring some respect from the fellow barnyard chicken yeah. to see him able to get on the fence yeah. and crow like a rooster. But one day, as a little funny-looking bird yes. was standing alone in the barnyard, he looked up and saw the most beautiful sight it had ever seen. Mm -hmm. It was a big eagle flying beautifully and majestically across the sky. Right. It looked like the king of the sky. Yes. The little bird became so excited when he saw it. That's the eagle in the air. And he began to yell, running from one side of the barnyard to the other, what are you? What are you? Hollering as loud as it could. At that time, the big eagle, with its powerful hearing and its keen eyesight, saw and heard the little bird yelling. And so the eagle flew down to where the little bird was, went up to the little bird and said, you ask, what am I? I want to know, what are you? Amen. You don't look like you belong where you are. Yes. The little bird responded, I am a chicken. I was born, uh, 
in on this farm, and I will live on this farm because I am a chicken. And after careful examination, the eagle looked at the little bird straight in the eye and said, look at my face. You look just like me. Look at my feet. You have the same. Stretch out your wings. They are not chicken wings. Look at me. You are just like I am. And I am an eagle. Little friend, you're not a chicken. You are an eagle. And you don't belong on the ground in the barnyard. You belong high up in the mountain. Yeah, yeah. You are made to fly high. Yes. You are made not to stay low, but to ascend yeah. into greater altitude of the atmosphere. Yeah. So dear friend, get out of this barnyard from among the chickens and go where you belong. Stretch out your wings yeah. and fly like the eagle you were born to be. You can and you must fly high. What a lesson, my brothers and sisters, this story conveys to every child of God, to every family member, to every friend. We, are, we were not born to exist in the barnyard of life. God wants us and God expects each of us to stretch out our God-given wings yes, yes, yes. and fly out. Yes, yes, yes. yes, we are living in frightening times. And they are frightening, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Make us wonder sometimes how long all of us are going to be here. The times are so frightening. The giants of trouble keep banging on the doors of our lives. The devil is on a rampage. He is out to conquer those whom he made it uh, devour. Yes. The devil never goes on a vacation. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Keep that in mind. He never goes on a vacation. He never gets insulted. Yes. If you close the front door in his face, or if you close the front door in his face, he just quickly goes to the back door. Yes. And if the back door is locked, he begins to examine possible entrance yes. through the windows of your life. Yes. And if he can't get through the window of your life, he instantly becomes Santa Claus yes. and climbs on the rooftop yes. and tries to get down the chimney yes. of your life. Yes. But when you have the wings of an eagle, eagle. you can fly high yes. where the devil cannot do you any harm. Right. So why not power up? with wings as eagles yes. and fly high. Yes. Fly, yes, fly, and fly high. Fly out of the barnyard of defeat into the high atmosphere of victory. Yes. There is an old saying that one's attitude determines one's altitude. Uh -huh. The higher you think, the higher you go in life. The bigger your thoughts, the bigger your achievements Amen. in life. Yes. We are told in the book of Proverbs, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. So if you think little, you remain little. Yes. Yes. If you think big, you, 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 you grow big. Yes. And I'm so happy to see that you here at Cookwell, y'all thinking big thoughts, yes. planning big plans. Yes. You get ready to take altitude yes. and fly high. Yes. And God will be with you. Yes, yes if you believe it, <clears throat> you can achieve it. Yes. Just trust the Lord, be of good courage, yes. and learn how to lean and depend yes. on Jesus. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Learn how to depend on him. Yes. You see, barnyard attitude gets you nowhere. Yes. But you have barnyard that attitude, a little rain dampens your spirit. Yes. Have you ever seen some people like that? Yes. Have all plans on Saturday to go to church? That's right. Saturday night after 12 o'clock, it begins to rain. And he says, I don't think I can make it. The least criticism, the 
discourages you from moving forward. Amen. Have you seen some people like that? Yes. They ought to do a good job and they can do a good job. If you call somebody to start criticizing you, yes. talking about it, pulling you down, yes. you get discouraged and you stop. Yes. That's the time to really take flight. Yes. High high. Yes. Don't let everybody stop you. Yes. If you're doing it in the name of Jesus, yes. don't you let anybody stop you. Yes. Slightest sign of danger freezes your ambition. Some of you just get scared. Don't be scared. The Lord is our shepherd. Yeah. Yes. We shall not go. Yes. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, a lot of people are scared to go through the cemetery. You know? <laughs> and I don't know why. I'm afraid to walk down the streets of Charleston. <laughs> Where those living people are. Yes. People are in the cemetery, they don't bother anybody. Yes. Close unless a limb falls and you think they get up. <laughs> and you have barnyard attitude. The I can't mentality dominates every move in your life. Pastor asked me to do something, Rev, I just can't do that. I'm sure the Reverend had something enough not to ask me to do it. He didn't think he could. The Lord directed him to do it. You ought to try it anyhow. In the name of the Lord. The Lord will make a way yes. out of no way. So my brothers and sisters, stretch out your wings. Fly high into the atmosphere of victory. Fly. You won't have to worry about falling if you fly in the name of the Lord. Amen. Because God is the wind yes. beneath our wings. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. And you start uh, taking altitude yes. in his name. Yes. And that's why you gotta pray, you know. Yes. You ought to pray in seat. Yes. And out of seat. Yes. You ought not begin the day until you pray. Yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. Ask him to, to, to guide you. Yes. Ask him to help you. Yes. Ask him to, to, to strengthen you. Yes. Help you to, ask him to help you to make it through yes. the day. And when the Lord blesses you yes. and kicks you through the day, when you come in at night, yes. you ought to pray again. And fly. Yes. God becomes the wind beneath your wings. Yes. Yes. yes, Job flew from defeat to victory. Mm -hmm. Daniel flew from defeat to yes. victory. Yes. Our forefathers and mothers flew from defeat to victory. Amen. If they didn't have God on their side, they didn't put their hands in God's hand, they could not have made it. Mm -hmm. But oh, hallelujah, they knew oh, yeah. that the master was not the master. On earth, yes. they knew that there was another master. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. The master of masters. Yes. And he will certainly take us through. Yes. Oh, yes, you may get knocked down sometimes. Yes. Yes. Don't get knocked out. Yes. Get out. Yes. Try it again. Yes. Don't be defeated. You can fly into victory. Yes. You can move from zero and become a hero. Yes. mountain top where God wants you to be. Amen. So yes, you can take your wings and fly from defeat to victory. Yes. Don't let anybody hold you down. Yes. Yes. Young people, I tell our young people who are in school, don't let anybody tell you you can't get that back. Yes. Yes. You can get it, but you gotta burn yes. a little midnight oil. Yes. Yes. Oh hallelujah. Yes. Don't let everybody tell you you shouldn't take algebra because you don't you can't make her up. Just say, I'm going to try it anyhow. Yes. I will not be defeated. Yes. I'm going to study it. Yes. Well, I wasn't an A student like these scholars up here. Yes. But I want you to know I got through school. Yes. Now, I had some schoolmates who could read the assignment in the book one time. And they had it. Yes. They could go and just pass it like that. 
Well, I couldn't do it that way. Huh? It's good to know yourself. Socrates said, no, my child. You know, what they need me to tell myself, oh, I read it one time. <laughs> and I, I, go down and talk. <laughs> God wants 
brought you in the midst of your trials and in the midst of your tribulations. God wants you to always look up. Look to the hill. Look to the hill from which comes your help. For our help comes from the Lord. Do I have witness? Have you ever tried it? Have you ever seen the hand?
raised by it takes a village to raise a child. That was a long time. Yes, sir. The village raised us. And back there, you know, uh, they, 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 they had the privilege and the freedom, you know, to, to spank us and to whip us. They didn't kill us. That's why I'm not so scared now. Because you can't whip the children and you can't spank them. You understand? Kill them. Now, some of them do, of course, they got to give up for them. <laughs> but you know, they didn't kill us. But we had many mothers and we had many fathers. Yes. And they, they reprimanded us. Yes. We got to get back to the basics. Yes. You know, yes. to the basics. Help all young people. We got to save them. Right. Because who's going to be in charge of these churches right. in the next 25 years or 50 years? Who's going to be in charge of the Senate? Where you are? If all of them are all messed up, we got work to do. We got some, we got some plans to do. We got to get out of the barn, y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Get up there so we can help somebody. Oh, yes. Many of them may say to you, oh, I'm an alcoholic and I'm a drug uh, pusher and I'm a this and I'm a that, but you tell them that God bless them, wants them to fly above these adversities of life. Yes. Yes. Tell them they can and they must. Yes. But before they can fly, they must, you know, before the eagle flies, he gets off, he stands up, then he takes off. We got to stand up before we can fly, you know. Amen. Stand up, first of all, on the inside. Amen. Standing up on the outside doesn't mean a hill of beans. You're not standing up on the inside. That's where it's at. When I think about our forefathers and mothers who came through slavery, how, how what harsh treatment they endured. And I said, how did they do it? How could they take it? But when, I, when I read about how they trusted in God, I said to myself, even though on the outside they were punished and they were unhappy, but on the inside, they were rejoicing because that they knew that there was a cause. Hallelujah. And that they would hold out and hold on. The Lord will come not when they wanted him. Yes. But he will come on time. Yes. Many of them prayed and said, oh, I may not see it in my day. Yes. But I'm working, I'm praying yes. for my children yes. and my children's children. My brothers and my sisters, yes, God wants you not to be selfish. Yes. He wants you to fly out of the darkness of selfishness yes. into the sunlight of opportunity yes. to help somebody along the way. Yes. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I trust in God myself. Yes. Oh, yes. how do you do? Yes. I trust in Him. Yes. I, I may not be rich, you know, and I never will be rich on the outside. Yeah. You understand. Yeah. But on the inside, yeah. I'm rich. Yeah. I feel rich. Yeah. But the other day, you heard about this billionaire. My Lord, didn't know we had some of them there around here. Yeah. Billionaire, 40 yard billion dollars. you going to give away 30 billion of them. I said, Lord, if you just give me a little bit of that. Yeah. Take a good look at that man. Yes. <laughs> to see if he looks any different from the way he looked. I look at his head. Head was the same as a human head. Yes. Look at his ear. He ain't had the tooth. Yes. He was standing up. I looked to see how many feet he had. Yes. He only had two. Yes. I said, Greg, as good as he's alive, he's a billionaire on the outside. But I wonder how is he on the Myself, George, John Gills, don't you worry about becoming a billionaire? You'll never be that. You not, you may never be even a dollar man. <laughs> but on the inside, and I'm so glad my mama and my daddy and my grandmama and my aunt and my uncle told me about Jesus.
One day, you know, it's all going to be over. We don't talk much about eschatology. They're coming to the end. When I was a child, I used to hear those preachers used to scare us. When, when the moon was dripping blood, when we shall stick our swords in the sand of time to study war no more. When we will close the Bible for the last time, no more hymns will be sung. Come into the throne, and the King of Glory will come to judge us all. The note of eschatology. We don't hear much about that now. A lot of us, you know, want to think we're going to be here forever. Yeah. Yeah. I've got sense enough to know. And in, in less than two years, I'll be celebrating 50 years in the ministry. Yeah. 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 And all of that time, I've, I have conducted many funerals. Men and women, boys and girls, and babies. Coming down the aisle so many times, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And each time I walk down that aisle, I think about me as the Lord, I'm coming home. Because gradually, we're coming home, we're going home. On that same train that came to get our loved ones, that same train. Out of the kingdom when I get there. When I get there, I say, oh, if you had just not held malice against your neighbor down the street, maybe you will get in. I don't want that. Oh, you had not taken away from the, the needy, you know, and took it for yourself. I don't want that. Oh, if you had just been a little better to your family. I don't want that. I want to be like Jesus. Lord, yes. I want to be a Christian yes. in my heart. Yes. I want to be a little more loving yes. in my heart. Yes. I want to be ready to go to heaven. You know, they used to sing a song, right? When I was growing up, I'll fly away. Yes. So if you're going to fly, you've got to have some wings. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. So one day we will fly from earth to glory. Yes. Looking forward to that day. But you know something? You don't need the eagle wings. Right. At that time, when it's time to go from earth to glory, yeah. you don't have to have that majestic, strong, yeah. robust wings of the eagle to go on the mountain. Yeah. You go on the yonder the mountain yeah. where the eagles reside. Yeah. But I like that song we sing sometimes, oh, if I had the wings of a dove. Oh, hallelujah. I'll fly away, be at rest. My brothers and my sisters, one day we're all going to meet on the other side. Yeah. Talking about family yeah. and friends. Right. We have a lot of family reunions. Great God Almighty. Yeah. There's going to be a great family reunion. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. I have a good mama who's gone on before. Yeah. And a good dad. Yeah. And a good grandma. Yeah. And many bishops. Yes. And many residing elders, yes. and many friends, yes. and many siblings yes. are looking for the day yes. when we're going to have a grand family in union. Up there, no more sex. Up there, no more sickness. Up there, no more earthquakes. Up there, no more hurricanes. Up there, where Jesus is.
sisters, maybe there's someone who's in the barnyard, but now you're ready to fly high. We can take wings as eagles by taking on the wings of Jesus, by surrendering ourselves to the saving power of Jesus Christ. And so brothers and sisters, as we are here right now, maybe there's someone who's ready to get out of the barnyard. Yeah. Maybe you realize that you're not a chicken, but you are an eagle. Yeah. Maybe you realize that you need the Lord right now. As the elders said, there is power in the name of Jesus. As we stand today, can you hear the Savior call? As we stand today, he's calling your name right now. And so, come. 
picture. Come and answer the call of the Lord. Won't you come at this time if you desire to be saved, if you desire to fly, to get out of the barn, y'all. Won't you come at this time? $1,300. Turner, 
$500. McNeil and Gordon families, $1,075. Austin family, $815. Dorsey Johnson families, $508. We raised in our offering $177. We have a grand total today of Before I announce this, um, we didn't want to turn any penny back. So we were constantly adding or whatever. So there might be little differences when we finally do, when you do the final poll. Because I believe the brother, Mac Neal, his should be a little more than that. He should be about 15 or 16,000, 1,600. Yeah, okay. So we're going to get that straight. Uh, our fifth place winner, the Fulmo Williams, 2,272. Fourth place, Green Green Hayes, two. $1,603. The Palmer Group, Blackstock, $2,764. The second place, Flagler Green, the same with $3,960. And the winner, get ready for this. Oh, Like nine
put your mind to it, you can do it. are some hard-working folks up here at Hopewell AME Church, and they know what we have to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you have to do something, you got to do it. Amen. And the folk rolled up their sleeves, and they are doing it. If you would, on your bulletin, you, you have to visualize and see with us what the Lord has blessed us with. That building is over $2.5 million. Amen. 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 So we needed that 44,000 plus Amen. in order so that God might be able to take us out of the coop. Amen. And cause us to fly high. Amen. Let me tell you all something. What God has for you it is for you. This has been a 40-year project in the making. For 40 years, am I telling the truth? For 40 years, this church has had the thought, amen, of building a new worship edifice. But this is the time. So my brothers and my sisters, we thank all of you. Brother Flake, are you crying? Well, since you have said that, Reverend, I don't want to take too much time away, but it makes me feel so good to be here. It wouldn't be something that, like you just said, 40 years ago was a long time. And I know my parents were very proud if they could come by this church and then say, well, it's done. Thank you. Amen. We are so happy and grateful to God yes. for what the Lord is doing in our midst. Yes. Over the past 11 months, everything that we have endeavored to do, the Lord has opened doors for us. Yes. For the presiding elder preached about how the devil can begin to try to find openings. Yes. Wherefore, he can come in and take over and take you off track. Yes. But it is the will of God for this church to do what God wants it to do. Yes. So the Lord, every time we turn around, continues to open a door, make a way. Every time we go someplace, folk are saying yes. Every time we turn around, somebody is just driving by giving us money. Yes. Because it is the will of God for this congregation to move forward. Yes. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we think that when you're a part of a denominational body, that there is the tendency for you to be dead. Amen. Amen. Well, we are a part of a denominational body, but we are yet alive. Amen. Amen. Our congregation is growing, and God is with us. Amen. So as we thank God for the financial blessing. We praise him because you, we have to just tell you a little bit spiritually about what the Lord is doing for us. Yes. If you were to just get a glimpse of Sunday morning worship during the week Bible study, vacation Bible school, church school, you can begin to see the phenomenal growth yes. that God is, occur is causing to be become occurred here, right here on the county line road. Yes. If the Lord gives us the ability. Next year, before this time, we will be able to walk into that sanctuary and worship and praise God in spirit and in truth. So hope well, we have five weeks before the annual conference. And when the conference season is over, we will continue to put another brick on the wall. Amen. 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 The Lord's name be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God for the presiding elder of the Edisto District. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for Dr. John Gilson. Amen.
and we thank God for him, but they all came in after we, uh, this is an ordinary wedding, it is a renewal of the vow. Amen. Amen. Pastor King and Elder King will be renewing their vows right here at 4 o'clock p.m. at Hopewell AME Church. Amen. So we ask you, my brothers and sisters, to prepare your hearts, your minds, and souls so we might be able to share with them in that experience. Praise the Lord. As we continue to grow in Christ, let us pray one another's strength in the Lord. Because as God has done for others, he is able to do it for you. Let me also say, we have prepared a very delicious repast for our out-of-the-area guests. We have asked the Mount Orr Church family to come all the way from Charleston, South Carolina, Young Island, South Carolina, Charleston County, and they have been traveling all afternoon. They got out of their worship, hopped on the bus and came straight here, so they're hungry, amen. And then they shouted up a storm, so they're good and hungry. <laughs> Amen. My brothers and sisters, those of us who were here earlier, we recognize that we have already eaten. Amen. Amen. So we are able to, after we've received the spiritual food, we can just go on home. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we ask those who are visiting with us, who are from, who were not here this morning and have not dined with us, brother and sister Sergeant, brother and sister Dees, uh, Rep. Brother Rutledge and Sister Rutledge. afternoon. We thank you, Lord, for those that have prepared food for us this afternoon. We pray that you bless the food and make it nourishment and good and sanctify for our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Come home all blessings. Amen. fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you this day and always. <laughs> of our brand new House of Hope app. Simply visit your Apple App Store or your Android Google Play and download the House of Hope Hemingway app. On this app, you will be able to stay in the loop with everything in our virtual campus. With one click, you connect in prayer, message other community members, give your tithes and offerings, and listen to sermons all while reading your app and Bible. Download today. 
Don't forget to join Pastor along with members of the ministerial staff every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 6.30 a.m. prayer. Also on Saturdays, make sure you share with the pastor and the ministerial staff as they bring you Bible study live beginning each week at 9 a.m. The Frank and Eunice Vereen Porch Ministry is about being a blessing to our community. Simply leave a covered dish, much needed items, baked items, or blessing on someone's porch or front door. You never know, the porch you bless could be the blessing you need. Do you need Wi-Fi access? Simply come to the church campus Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and connect to Wi-Fi absolutely free. Ways to give? You may come to the church campus every Sunday between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, where one of our Stewardship and Finance Commission members will happily receive your gifts of tithes and offerings. Also, you can always give by mailing your donations directly to the church office. Or you can go online and give using our church website, the Givelify app, and now even on our state-of-the-art digital app. We are appreciative for all you are doing to push the kingdom of God forward in this season. The House of Hope remains to be blessed because of people like you. Thank you and remember to worship God in spirit and in truth. Until next time, God bless you.